Okay, in part two of our multi-part series in working with Business Insights Explorer, we're gonna dig deeper into some of the functions and features that we can manipulate our data with. First thing, we're gonna be creating a top 10 customer sales list for the year 2010, because my ABC data is mostly has transactions in the 2010 fiscal year. So we're gonna do a couple of things. We're using the item transactions table as our source. And if you noticed, we have the item code, description, warehouse, transaction date, which is important, transaction type, which is important. We have quantity. We don't really see price or extended price on this view. I don't see customer in this view. So we're gonna need to add those first. Now if we don't see a column in our report, there's a couple of ways we can add it. This button here, all the way in the top left hand side, essentially gives us some additional fields that we can add. Now I am interested in the unit price. I'm also interested in the extended price. And those get added at the very end. Right now I'm not interested in the warehouse. I'm not interested in the warehouse description. And I'm gonna be using my transaction date for my report, I'm not interested in the reference date. And so I've I essentially was able to add and delete columns to my view, but we're still missing a couple of pieces of data. If I right click on this top bar here where the headers are, you'll see that I'll have several selections. I'm gonna to go to column settings. In column settings, this is where we control all of the columns. And this is where we're gonna add a couple. Now you see I don't have customer number in here, but I do know it's in my item transactions history table. So I'm going to go to add. I'm going to go to my IM item transaction history table. And I'm going to add my AR division number first. And I'm going to go back to that same table and I'm going to add the customer number next. While I'm in here I'm going to add one more piece of data and that is going to be my fiscal year. And this field is just gonna make it easier for me to filter um, rather than using the transaction date to do so. I'm gonna hit okay. Now the extra columns that we just added are all the way to the right. If I want, I can click and highlight this column and essentially move it over to the desired location. I can do the same thing with AR division number and finally the AR customer number. Now we're going to be creating a graph using sales information. Now this item transaction history table has all types of information. We have sales information, we have inventory information, we also have purchase order information which the transaction type for those will be POs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to filter this selection to show me just my sales information. So now I've effectively filtered this list to only show me sales information. 
Since we're running this report for 2010, I can filter this for just 2010. Now I'm almost ready to start creating some graphs. If we notice our quantities column has several negatives. What happens is with the item transaction history table is sales orders are outflows of inventory. So it's tagging them with a negative. We have our unit price. Then we have our extended price. Now you'll notice our extended price is also negative. Now I'm going to want to change this when we go to graph because I'm interested in seeing this as a positive number, not as a negative number. The reason it's showing up as a negative is because our quantities are showing up as a negative. But that's okay. We can come over here and we can right click our top section go to column settings we're gonna add a calculated field we're gonna call this dollar sales in my expression builder I'm gonna find my field called extended price and I'm simply going to multiply that by negative one I'm also going to choose to format this as a currency. You'll notice now I have a column called dollar sales similar to what the extended price column is, only it's formatted and it's also not displaying the negatives or I should say the negative signs. So we should now have all of the elements ready for us to create a couple of neat graphs.